Hello and welcome to this tutorial for the Wildlife Sandbox. In this tutorial I'll show you all of the basics how to use the Sandbox Editor added in the newest build. To get started, click onto Sandbox, select the level you want to build in. I'll use Showroom because it's nice and flat. This will probably not appear the first time you open the editor. I'll use an empty new. This is the default for people who have no saves yet. And here we are in the Sandbox. To open the editor, you use the tab key. To close the editor, you can also use the tab key. Now a lot of UI just appeared. I'll explain it briefly and we'll go into detail later. Here's the name of your scene. Currently we have none. This is the save and load bar. I'll just load a level for demonstration purposes. Here we go. This is the utility bar. I'll explain all of these buttons later too. Here you can add scenes and poses to your level. This is a filter. You can filter for either types or the name for, of something. And this is the outliner. It shows all of the objects that are in the scene. In this case, only these three. Down here, you can see all of the props you can use to place. They are separated into categories. You can see the category name when hovering over them. These are the camera buttons. Uh, we have separate camera modes, but I'll also explain that later. Up here is the undo redo history. More about that later. And you can use these buttons to close and open your eye elements if they're in the way. I added a small widget here to show which um, buttons I'm pressing if you're confused what I've done and I forgot to mention it. There are two camera modes in the editor. The first one is the free camera mode, which you can see is selected here. To use it, you hold the right mouse button and use the W, S, A, D and E and Q keys to move it along its axes. You can use the, uh, the mouse to rotate it. If you scroll while you're holding the right mouse button, you change the camera's speed, which you can also see is represented here. The second camera mode is the orbital camera, which is here. You can either click on it or you can hold Alt to toggle to the other camera, which is not selected. In the orbital camera, using the left mouse button will rotate around a fixed point. If I focus an object, hitting F, I can see it always stays in the center of my screen and I can look around it. The right mouse button zooms in and out. Using the middle mouse button, you can pan the camera around. Now that we know how to navigate our scene, let's build one. I'll load an empty save, just so that we have a clean canvas. And down here, you can see all of the props we have at our disposal. We have rocks, flora, furniture, food, lights, which are very important to make your scene pop, some weapons, architectural things, assorted things, decorations, effects, and prototype shapes. To place a prop in your scene, you can either click on it and click in the scene where you want it, or you can click and drag it into the scene, which is, uh, does exactly the same. If you want to place multiple without having to drag it in every time, you can hold shift and place it and you will still keep it in your cursor to place more of them. You can also duplicate a prop by clicking on it and hitting Ctrl D. Now as you might have noticed, every time I placed a prop, it appeared on the left side in my outliner. This is just a list representation of the current scene. Each element in this list can be selected, shift selected or control selected if you want to select multiple. This is also possible in the scene. For the elements in the outliner, we have five options. The first one locks the interaction in the viewport. This means we can click on any prop except the one we said to not be interactable. You can still select it in the outliner though. The second button completely locks the interaction with the object. As the tooltip suggests, you cannot transform, delete or change properties in this object while it is locked. The third option toggles the visibility in the viewport. The fourth button focuses the object, which is the same as hitting F while it is selected. And finally, the fifth option is to delete the object, which of course currently isn't possible because it is locked. In the outliner, 
clicking on the name of the object may, uh, enables you to rename it. Let's call this Bob. You can also reorder the props by dragging them and placing them wherever you want. You can also group objects together by dragging the object you want to have below another one, which is in the industry called a child, and this is the parent, which means if you move this object, all of the objects below it also move with it. You can also have empty groups by either pressing this button, which will create a group out of all of the selected objects. So if I select all of these and click the button, they will all be grouped below it. Or in the assorted uh, category, there is a separate group you can put in and drag objects onto it. Certain props will have settings dedicated to them. You will see them below the outliner. Feel free to play around with them. If multiple props are selected and they share the same settings, changing any setting will apply the setting to all of the objects. A small helpful shortcut key. If a single object is selected, you can use the home and end keys to move that object to the beginning and end of its parent. In this case, it doesn't have a parent, so it'll go to the top of the inspector or the bottom. But if you use an object within a group, it'll only push it up and down in its group. Now let's talk about this colorful thing we call a gizmo. It is used to move, rotate and scale an object in 3D space. You can use these arrows to move it along its axis. You can use these planes to move it along two axes, which are highlighted. Or you can use this white ball to move it on the camera plane. To rotate an object, you can either click on the rotate object button up here, or as it indicates, use the key E. To rotate it, you can either use the gizmo again, or you can click in the middle and have a free rotation. To scale an object, either use this button or the R key and use the controls to scale it on each axis or use the middle control to scale it on all axes at the same time. You can also transform the object either in world space or local space. This only has effect when you are not in scale mode. Like for example, in move mode, you can see the gizmo is aligned with the world. If I set it to local space, it is now aligned with the object. If we look further in the UI, we have a gizmo size slider, which you can increase the size if you need so. And you can see all of the values of the position, rotation and scale of the object, which you can also change here. You can also snap the object to a grid while transforming it by either clicking this button or holding control to toggle between them. You can use these three values to change the snapping interval. Movement will be in centimeters, rotate will be in degrees, and scale will be in scale units corresponding to this. Okay, let's try this. I'll enter snapping mode and drag the object and you can see it'll move 25 centimeters on a grid. When rotating, it'll rotate 15 degrees at a time and scaling will scale it by 0.25 on these values. Okay, now that I've explained props, let's go over to sex scenes. To add a sex scene, you use this button, which opens a new UI. On the left side, you can see all of the pairings with characters that have animations with each other. And the number in brackets is the amount of animations for this pairing. Keep in mind, the name does not represent the character, but its skeleton. If you open the character legend, you can see which skeleton name represents which characters. Okay, let's go ahead and select Max and Maya, for example, with 54 animations. As soon as you select it, all 54 animations will be shown in this list, which you can click on to add to the animation queue. In the animation queue, you can reorder the items to your liking and change the settings, as well as delete them if you don't need them anymore. You can also specify whether the queue should be looped after it's done by using this checkbox. On the right side, you can select which characters should be participating in the act. This includes custom characters. You can rotate this preview scene using the mouse button. You can also take off their clothes by hitting toggle clothes. If you're happy with your scene, 
hit place and you'll be able to place it within the scene. Sex scenes have a custom UI. You can see all of the animations you specified. You can hold the animation, which pauses the playback but keeps the animation running. You can also change their appearance in the customizer. And of course you can delete it if you don't need it or re-edit the scene if needed. Let's go to our last type, which is the pose. Click this button to add a pose. Specify the skeleton you want to add. I'll stay with Maya. You can also specify the preset. Let's take Serenia for example. And hit place. And you'll be able to place it in the scene. Poses have their own custom UI. You can change the speed of the animation they're playing. Can change whether they should uh, use a predefined pose, in this case acrobatic blend. You can make them blend between two poses. Let's use doggy for example. And you can see it interpolates between them depending on the value of this slider. The same thing can be done with the face. You can use this slider to uh, interpolate out of the idle and use this slider to interpolate between these two. So let's use crying for example. Now we can interpolate between angry and crying. Continuing down the list, we have a look at. At the moment it's set to nothing, so she'll just use the direction the animation specifies for her. If we hit direction, we can specify where she looks. And if we hit camera, she'll do her best to look at the editor's camera. Other than that, you also have the option to disable specific physics for this character. And again, you can use the customizer tab to change the appearance of the character you're currently editing. Okay, let's go over to cameras. You can either place a camera from the assorted tab, or you can add a camera at the current editor camera's location using this button. You can look through the view of a camera by possessing it, but at the moment it is not possible to rotate the camera while you're possessing it. So you'll either have to press unpossess or hit escape. If you have multiple cameras in the scene, let's add another one and possess it. You can use the next and previous buttons to toggle between them. Or alternatively you can use the page up and page down buttons. This also only works if one of the cameras is selected. If you want to reframe a camera, you can either rotate it just like any other prop or you can use the align with camera button which will align this camera with the editor camera again. The camera prop has a lot of settings but the most important four are, let's possess the camera, the field of view, the focal distance which will add this focal plane, the aperture which will change how sharp the uh, image is around the focal point and the possess time which uh, just indicates how long it'll take to possess this camera. So for example, if we set this to 10, which is seconds, then go to the previous camera, which is still set to 0.5, so it took half a second to go there. And then back to the first one, it'll take 10 seconds for that camera to reach its des destination. The last thing I want to show you in this tutorial is the utility bar. We went over groups and cameras already, but what are these buttons? These are the level settings. These are different depending on which level you selected. This level, for example, has lights in them already, which you can turn on and off. You can change the time of day and you can change the cloud coverage of this level. This also gets saved in the level save. The second button is the undo history. We can select a point where we want to go back to and go forwards again. You can also use these buttons or the default Ctrl Z, Ctrl Y buttons. And of course you can close it if you don't need it anymore. The third button toggles the visibility of icons in the world. The fourth button toggles the player visibility. And the fifth button shows you a key map of all available keys that can be used in the editor. That about wraps up this video on the basics for the sandbox editor. I hope you learned something, I hope you enjoyed, happy building.